thank you to the organizers for for inviting me. It's, I'm very happy to be here uh, for the celebration of the 30 years of the course, uh, 16 years after I, I took the course. Uh, so it's very uh, uh, very nice to be here. Uh, when they invited me, the organizers asked me to talk about uh, climate change and um, and health. Uh, climate change and health is a huge uh, topic. There are uh, there are lots of things, uh, and actually, it is very relevant uh, for public health. Just a few years ago, the Lancet Commission uh, said that climate change is the biggest threat uh, of this century uh, for public health. So there are many, many different things that can be uh, uh, explored and need to be studied in, 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 in this regard. But in this talk, I'll, I'll just focus on, on, on one of them uh, that are probably uh, the more direct effects of, of climate. So it's the, the, the effects that temperatures have on, on extreme, extreme temperatures have on, on health. But there are lots of other things going through probably more indirect mechanisms like higher temperatures affecting crops and this affecting nutrition or affecting the availability of water or uh, affecting uh, conflict uh, and so on. It's, it's a very vast area. Uh, it's very good uh, if you want to start working on that. It's very multidisciplinary. Uh, almost all disciplines are there. Climatic sciences, economy, uh, politics, uh, sociology. Um, so it's very interesting and, and very challenging. But as I said, I'll go back to just one uh, uh, very uh, concrete uh, topic, which is, uh, well, I'll talk about some, some studies that we did uh, on the effects of heat on mortality and how these uh, studies uh, led to some other studies uh, linking heat to, to the occurrence of accidents. So. Everything I'm going to present is based on time series studies. So in these studies, the unit of analysis is the day. And basically what we want to know is, uh, do we see more deaths or more hospital admissions or more accidents in days with hot temperatures than uh, in milder days, the rest uh, being equal. Uh, and just to visually uh, look at that, uh, this is a graph. Uh, uh, from uh, the uh, 2003 heat wave, uh, and this is it from Spain. Uh, and here we have the, the, the two time series, the temperature series and the mortality series. So here we have the, all the, uh, the days in summer, the, the three months in summer. And then we have uh, in bold, this is the, the temperature series. It goes with the, with the right axis. And then here in gray, we have the, the mortality series. So how many people died every day? And on top of that, we have a smooth curve to, to be able to see more easily the, the trend in, in mortality. So one, one thing that we can see directly from, from this graph is that the, the two cities go, go in almost in parallel. So when temperature goes up, mortality goes up. And here, temperature goes down, mortality goes down. Temperature goes up again, goes up again, and so on. And then here, temperature uh, uh, at the beginning of August, uh, went to up to uh, temperatures uh, above uh, 35 degrees. The, uh, the average temperature, temperature was above uh, 35 degrees for several days. Uh, and then we see that mortality goes up uh, abruptly. So, so from 450 deaths, it goes up to, to, to 600. And then when the heat wave finishes, then mortality goes down again. So there is uh, a relationship, or it seems to, that there is a, a clear relationship between the two. Uh, what we do is we focus on on the short term effects so we don't we don't care we don't want to compare winter with summer mortality uh, we just want to see the um, the short term effects so what we do is we use models that uh, that remove the seasonal trends so this is the the, the seasonal and, and temporal trends in in mortality and when we fit the models then we are able to to estimate the um, the exposure response the relationship between uh, mortality risk and and temperature and this is for example for uh, barcelona and we see this kind of uh, u shape where there is a, a temperature or a range of temperatures of minimum mortality and then when temperatures go hot, hotter 
or when they go colder, then the risk of mortality uh, increases. And this is something that has been replicated in, in many parts of the world, and you always see this kind of association. It, it may change where the, the temperature of minimum mortality is, and uh, it may change the slope of, of, of the two curves, but more or less we reproduce the same, the same thing. Uh, and one thing about temperature mortality is that, well, the people that are more susceptible, uh, this is the age distribution, and we see that the, the, the higher risk are basically in the, in, in the elderly or uh, in uh, 65 years and older. Uh, and another thing that uh, is good to, to keep in mind is that when we see these increases in mortality, at least part of it may be due to uh, what is called short-term mortality displacement. So uh, there may be people that are about to die and they may have died in three days or in, or in one week and then the heat wave comes and they die and so their death is advanced by just one or two days or, or, or seven days. So it's not a big public health problem compared to cases where uh, the, the death is advanced by, by uh, by a longer period, but we have both. We, uh, okay, so and we did uh, study in Catalonia where we also look at the cause-specific uh, mortality. So we look at for a variety of uh, of causes, and so we saw that there are increased uh, risk of mortality by diabetes, by mental health disorders, by several cardiovascular diseases, some respiratory diseases. Um, kidney and urinary system diseases. Uh, but we also inc uh, uh, included external causes. And many of the previous studies have excluded external causes from this, uh, from this kind of analysis. Uh, but we included them and we actually saw increases risk of mortality during heat waves associated with uh, traffic accidents, uh, falls and uh, suicide. Uh, and actually, there is some plausibility for, for, for this situation. There, there had been previous links uh, uh, relating heat with, with suicide and, uh, and violence. And also, we know that heat and cold uh, uh, um, affect our cognition and our performance, and this may, may increase the, the risk of accidents. So, uh, in view of those, um, of those results, we, we did a couple uh, more studies. Uh, one was first to validate this finding that when we have high temperatures, there are more uh, traffic accidents. So we saw that with mortality data, but here we try to reproduce that using all traffic accidents, not just the one where someone dead, uh, died, uh, but using all of them. So we had a much, much stronger uh, sample size. And actually, if we look at the, at the literature on driving and, and temperature, there, are, there were actually several experimental studies uh, where you put people, they put people in a room uh, with a driving simulator and, and they drive at, at, uh, at different temperatures, or actually in real cars, and they, uh, and they drive uh, at different temperatures and they assess the, the, their performance. And they show that if you are in a hot environment, uh, well, we make more technical errors, we show increased tendency to drift out of the lane, uh, we make more large, large steering adjustments, we miss more signals, and, and we report more fatigue. So there is possibility, uh, and this is, these associations were known, but at the population level in, in, an epidemi in a med epidemiological study, we didn't know if, if uh, extreme temperatures translate to more more accidents. So we did this uh, this study uh, 12 years. So we had uh, more than 100,000 uh, crashes, uh, which was an average of 64 per day. And we had when we had the data from the from the accidents, we had data on concurrent factors. So this for e for every crash, we know. We knew if uh, there was, for example, a positive alcohol test, a traffic violation, bad weather, or uh, there were uh, bad road conditions. But we also had uh, some other um, variables on that relate to driver performance. So uh, we had, if the accident uh, destruction was involved in, 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 the, in the accident, or a driver error, or a disease fatigue or, or sleepiness. And in 32% of the accidents, there, there were one of, one of these uh, causes were, uh, were recorded. 
So these are the, the, the results of this, of this study. Um, when we analyzed all, all crashes together, uh, we didn't see a relationship with, with maximum temperature. But when we look at the heat wave indicator, we saw that uh, during heat waves, the, the risk of traffic accidents increases by, uh, by 3%. When we restricted the analysis to the, the crashes uh, with driver performance, uh, this was our hypothesis, uh, uh, we found much stronger uh, associations. So uh, during heat waves, uh, the risk increases almost 8%, but then also we saw uh, uh, a continuous increase. So for every degree increase in, in temperature, uh, the, the risk of traffic accidents increased by, by 1%. So here we confirm our uh, our initial results with mortality using all, all, all the accidents and also uh, these results pointed out that the effect is uh, uh, this increase is, uh, is through diminished uh, human performance uh, under hot con conditions and well the study had some uh, some limitations because for example we, we didn't have denominator data we don't know how many uh, cars are, uh, were driving a, a every day, and we try to control that with uh, with indicators for um, for day of the week and and, and other uh, temporal trends. And the last study that uh, I want to to show is this analysis that uh, we just recently did on occupational injuries. Um, it is known also that uh, well, both heat and cold uh, can decrease our performance when, when conducting uh, some jobs, so for example, through dehydration or other factors. Uh, this may decrease our attention uh, uh, or have more fatigue, and this is then we are more prone to have uh, uh, occupational accidents. Or also with cold, uh, uh, we, we may have uh, decreased dexterity because of a cold or because of the equipment that we, that we are wearing to protect from cold. Or there can be uh, uh, icy conditions or slippery conditions that can also contribute to, to an increased risk. So here we did uh, a similar kind of analysis. Uh, we had data for uh, the entire Spain for a period of 20 years. So we had a very large database of uh, 60 million injuries. Um, and most of them, 91%, uh, were bone fractures or, or superficial injuries. Uh, and 47% occurred uh, in the construction and manufacturing sector. And when we did the analysis, we actually found uh, an exposure response function that is very similar uh, uh, to the mortality one. So we also have a temperature of minimum injuries, and then when we have hotter temperatures, the risk increases, and also when we have cold, colder temperatures, the risk uh, uh, increases. In this case, the minimum is, is at, uh, at uh, colder temperatures that compared to mortality. When we look at uh, different socioeconomic, uh, um, different economic sectors, uh, as expected, we saw a, a higher increase in the uh, agriculture sector uh, because they work outside, um, but also in many other sectors in, in construction, uh, waste collection, um, etc. Uh, and this actually has a, a very high impact. Uh, we calculated that 2.7% of all uh, injuries are, can be attributable to temperatures. Uh, almost all of them are due to heat. Uh, and this uh, percent represents huge numbers. So for example, in Spain, uh, this represents that uh, almost 22,000 injuries per year are due to temperature, or equivalently 60 injuries, occupational injuries per day. Uh, if we take into account the, um, uh, the duration of the, of the leaf, uh, there are six, uh, 600,000 uh, person days uh, of lost work per year, uh, which is equivalent to uh, 42 days per, per thousand workers. So it has, uh, it has also important uh, economic implications. So, to conclude, uh, the main message is that, well, uh, extreme heat and cold are associated with in, uh, increased mortality, uh, but also, uh, especially heat is associated with uh, an increased risk of, of accidents. Uh, and this is uh, important, the occupational part, because it, it affects a younger population. 
uh, compared to mortality that was mostly restricted to the elderly. Here is the working population and some of these injuries can have uh, uh, long-term uh, disabilities. Uh, and also, uh, I think the field of uh, occupational health uh, under climate change is and, and, and will be more important because there are, there are already some reports showing that in many parts of the world uh, it will not be safe to work outside uh, during some parts of the year. Uh, and this is all I wanted to, to tell you and thank you for your attention.